Injustice, the brand new DC anime film, which is an adaptation of two things actually. It's an adaptation on the video game series Injustice Gods and Monsters and Injustice 2. Clearly I'm a fan of the game, so I did some video game edit stuff with it. Uh, I'll put it somewhere in this video if you want to check them out. But actually it is an adaptation of the tie-in comics that happened when the first game came out. Naturally, there's a video game based on DC Comics. DC starts to do some marketing stuff around it, and so and one of it is a comic book series, a prequel to the game as they mostly do. And as I think most people did, we all kind of treated it as a pass away, like throwaway thing. Like it's probably gonna be fine, good at best. Some video game tie-in thing. It's just gonna be like, oh, as I said, the tie-in things in loose tough threads. See how we got there, kind of thing. And what people were saying about the comic, because I haven't read it, I haven't read any of the, the comic book in Titan Suffering Justice, but what people were saying is it's fantastic. It actually adds the witches of, of the story of the games. And naturally, Warner Brothers wants to make this into an anime movie. So this is how we are today. And when they announced it, I was a little bit like, as much as I'm a fan of the games, is is anyone kind of getting bored with the whole like like seriously? In the last like the game came out in like in 2013, so the comic series did the same thing. It came out in 2013. In less than 10 years, we've been nothing like all all the big Superman stories in the last 10 less than 10 years have been all but evil Superman stories. And I'm like, I feel like I'm, I have seen Evil Superman more, I have seen The Death of the Waynes. So the moment they announce it, I'm, I'm like, uh, another one? Like I'm fine with Brightburn and, and Homelander and, um, and Augie Man, you know, Superman type characters who are like clearly the Superman of their world. But like the boy style himself, can the boy style just be the boy style? So I got a little bit like, oh, here we go, okay, I'm going to watch it, but okay. But I just finished watching the movie, and holy crap, it's good. Like there's some issues with the film. Like it mainly it's one of those situations where they have little like a, a B and C, uh, basically a, a B and C plot, and it, it's it's a whole thing where like those are not that interesting. Like the stuff with. Uh, Harley Quinn and Green Hour. I'm like, I like, I like Green Hour. I, we all know how I love Harley Quinn. But I felt like you could easily cut them out of the movie and wouldn't, as far as you can, you can cut, cut them out of the movie and it wouldn't hit a single now to beat difference from the A plot. Same with something that was going with Nightwing. Nightwing's plot felt really out there really like didn't really felt needed with the plot as well but outside of that the main story itself when it basically becomes justice league civil war it's amazing it's a really really well done movie it's, it is handled so well like the plot of it is as i mentioned it's evil superman but what it's about is that one day the joke I'm tired of losing all the time. I wonder when so I go and get when I go to the shoppers for the boy stout. And the Joker wins. He blows up Metropolis and makes Superman thinks that Lois, who has his unborn child in in her, thinks that she's Doomsday and accidentally kills her. And it just makes Superman snap. So he goes to Arkham, he smashes through the buildings, and immediately kills the Joker. And because of that, he becomes an evil dictator. And Batman's really humming through. Like, Batman's really humming through. And saying, like, Clark, Clark, there's a line that you don't cross. Stay back. You know, be the man that you are, not the man that you're turning into. Don't be the monster. Don't basically turn into the. It's that classic thing of um, what Batman says in, in, in Batman on the Way Hood. No, it'd be too damned easy. All I've ever wanted to do is kill him. 
A day doesn't go by when I don't think about subjecting him to every horrendous torture he's dealt out to others, and then end him. But if I do that, if I allow myself to go down into that place, I'll never come back. I'm Edby Darkenbury here. Like, not, not, not you. And of course you have like Wonder Woman, basically Wonder Woman and Batman are, are like the devil and the angel whispering into his shoulders. Because Wonder Woman is the devil who's kind of like, you, he was a monster, you, you should do it and you should like, control governments and, you know, spoil guns and, and, and get rid of this and that uh, and, you know, even kill someone for a living and, and all that. Like, like that, she's basically that, and it's just really well put together. Yeah. And here's the thing about it: like, there's a good emotional beats. There's a lot of holy shit, and it could just naturally be like, you know, we know these characters. Maybe we don't know these. Yeah, you, know, you have that emotional hook of it. But that's in the end of the day. It's people who have two different points of view. Who still want to be mates? Who still want to be friends? And because constantly after the movie, they are helping each other. They're fighting along each other. They're on the same side of each other. But because of the methods of each other and how they want to go, like there's a scene where Batman has to just watch Superman wrecking some fools or just murdering. And it's there's a horror aspect of it. It's actually they're able to capture the horror of like a guy like uh, they got Justin Hartley playing Superman. When he's a, a turn and very glued on and very like, I have this goal. I'm doing this for the good. I need to get rid of guns. I need to do this and this and this. When he is losing it, and that journey of losing it, that's he's good. When he's like at the beginning, regular Superman. I was like, oh, I don't know about this. I mean, the voice acting as in this movie is very stereotypical. Like, you get an actor who have a big growly voice, so they could, so because they have a big growly voice, it could be Batman or someone who can be Xena, who who, who can do like a who can do like a Lu Lucy Lawless kind of person. Yeah, well, you're Wonder Woman. Yeah, you know, like the voice acting is not that well. Isn't that oppressive? I was surprised by um, Plastic Man, by the way. <laughs> plastic Man! <laughs> it was the highlight. I was like, okay, they found a way with the Plastic Man storyline and it worked there. Um, but that was one of the criticisms I have with this movie is the ending. Like, the ending just felt like, okay, we got, uh, this is getting a little bit too long. Uh, we'll have a big climax sequence and then we'll just wrap everything up in a tight little bow in 30 seconds in a way. And it just felt a little bit washed, a little bit, a little bit jointed. But this movie is oppressive. Um, Injustice. I, I, I'm just really surprised in the last couple of ones where like, because there was a hot sweep for the last like, what, f seven years of like, shit film after 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 shit film. To the point that when we are seeing good DC anime films again, it's like, oh my god. It does feel like we're back. With Long Halloween Part 1 and Part 2 and and Superman Man Tomorrow, it's really a great time to be found of DC and the, the animated stuff once again. It's just like, ha, ah, it's great.